G'day guys, Jesse from True Footy here once again to take you through my round nine tips. Sorry once again for the lack of the True Footy Reacts video this week. As I said, I was finishing off my last assignment at uni, so there's light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully that won't happen too much more throughout the season. During the last round, it looks like I've been dethroned as the footy tipping leader as Dave O'Gangel and Farmer Once a Fife has slipped into first and second. Looks like it was actually Fremantle who let me down just like they let down their supporters every week. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding, just bants, guys. Just as an interesting aside though, I have actually been invited to another YouTube podcast with a guy called Aussie Sam Games on the Sportopia podcast. He's actually had a few interesting guests before. He's had Caden McDonald and The Bev as well. So I've got the chance to join that elite level of company and hopefully we're gonna get a podcast done next week. If you're interested in watching my episode with him, then I'll let you guys know when it comes out. Anyway, guys, it's time to get stuck into round nine. First game of the week we have is West Coast hosting Melbourne at Optus Stadium on Friday night. The Eagles were much improved against the Saints last week, who were admittedly a bit undermanned. The Eagles did have key players missing too, but for them it's just really a focus on trying to improve their brand of footy week after week. Their intensity and their ball movement did look improved on recent weeks, but I think we can all agree they've definitely got another gear or two to go to yet. The Ds on the other hand pulled off in a miraculous win over the Suns at Metricon, winning with literally the last kick of the game. Clayton Oliver went berserk and Marty Hall kicked an amazing goal to equal the scores with less than a minute to go. The Demons have now put together two wins in a row and their season is just alive, so I expect them to throw everything at this game as well. This is not a simple game to tip. The Ds are certainly in with a good shot, but for me, I think the Eagles are just gonna continue that slow improvement and do enough to get the W. I tip the Eagles to win this game by 20 points. Next up, we have Collingwood hosting the Saints at the MCG on Saturday. Now, the Magpies received an almighty scare last week, almost going down to the Blues at the MCG, and they're probably a little bit lucky to get away with it in the end. Rather than mark the pies down for their performance, I'm actually gonna say you have to give the Blues a lot of credit for almost getting the win, and the pies did well to respond to the challenge. I captained Brody Grundy this week in AFL Fantasy, and that was bloody lucky because he scored 149. The Saints, on the other hand, come into this game on the back of three pretty disappointing losses, although they do have their injury concerns, like I said. The injuries have probably come at a bad time for them because in the last four weeks, they would have played Adelaide, GWS, West Coast, and now Collingwood. They've slumped back down to 12th on the ladder, and to be honest, I don't expect things to get easier for them this week. I'm gonna tip the Pies to have a big win by 43 points. Next up, we have Brisbane hosting Adelaide at the Gabba. After their promising start to the season, we've just seen the Lions stumble slightly as the season progresses. They had wins over some weaker teams like Sydney and the Gold Coast, but this week fell short in Ballarat against the Bulldogs. Zorko, Robinson and McCluggage are all in great form, but they just fell short of what would have been a pretty important win for their finals hopes. This week for them presents a massive challenge because you have to go back to 2009 to find Adelaide's last loss at the Gabba. Now the Crows are having a bit of a resurgence this year after their loss to North. They've actually found themselves third on the ladder. They were too good for the power last week who were admittedly missing a lot of key players, but they were still impressive in an away showdown. Rory Sloan and Brad Crouch in particular are doing a great job leading the midfield, and it's great to see Rory Laird regain form straight after I traded him out of my fantasy team. Oh, by the way, I'm being sarcastic. This week, I'm gonna to have to say you have to tip with the recent form lines, and I'm gonna say Adelaide win this by 26 points. Next up, we have the Cats hosting the Bulldogs at GMHBA Stadium. Now, the Cats did well last week to hold off a north side that is starting to slowly improve. Even though they only beat north by four goals, you have to say they're still absolutely the standout team of the competition. Tim Kelly had an absolute day out on the weekend, and he's found himself in first place in our mock Brownlow count. Paddy Dangerfield, his teammate, is also in second. Mitch Duncan is another player who's having a great season, but because of how deep Geelong bat this year, you haven't really heard that much about him. The Doggies, on the other hand, made it two in a row with a good win over the Lions in Ballarat last week. Ballarat, Ball Ballarat, Ballarat. Josh Dunkley is probably one who's found himself in a few AFL fantasy teams this week after his BOG performance. With the form the Doggies are currently in, you can't write them off for this game, but GMHBA Stadium is an absolute fortress for the Cats. In fact, the Doggies haven't won there since 2003. I'm tipping Geelong to have a comfortable victory here of 32 points. Next, we have the Bombers hosting the Dockers at Marvel Stadium. This game in particular is one I can't wait for because I really can see it going either way. Now, the Dons are copping a lot of heat for their loss to Sydney last week, but I kind of thought the Swans rose to the challenge rather than Essendon being particularly bad. I did see an interesting stat though, which shows the Bombers have lost five of their last six games against bottom play sides. I also did kind of predict in my video last Last week that the Dons weren't going to be able to play their fast breaking style on the smaller SCG ground and I did tip them but I was kind of right about that. I have to call out the good calls I make on this show because the rest of them are shocking. 
They come up against an improved Fremantle side who will be pretty disappointed with losing to Richmond last week. There is a lot of good signs for the Dockers at the moment, but they probably needed to win one of their last two games to really announce themselves as a finalist this year. Nat Fife deserves a mention because he's quietly having a brilliant season. Personally, I gave him the three votes even though his side lost this week. He had three goals and 33 possessions. The funny thing is at the start of the season, we were discussing who's the best out of Danger, Dusty and Fife, and I said that Dusty was the best. It's funny how this season so far, Dusty would clearly be ranked third out of those three players. But in terms of this game, being back at Marvel will suit the Dons a lot, and I just think they have an extra gear that Fremantle probably don't have just yet. I'm gonna tip the Bombers to win this by 24 points. Next up, we have North hosting the Swans down at Blundstone Arena in Hobart. As I alluded to before, North have put in an improved showing in the last two weeks. They belted to the Blues and then pushed along pretty far the following week at Marvel Stadium. They've got a real workman-like midfield, but it's fairly consistent, particularly Cunnington and Higgins. I do think that North have severely underachieved this season and they're not a bottom two side at all. Perhaps with two good games in a row, they'll start to get their confidence back and start playing to their actual ability. The Swans also are coming off an improved showing as they obviously beat the Bombers last Friday night. Can I just take the opportunity to say, I don't really see all the shock on a Paul over Dane Rampey climbing the goalpost and then not being a free kick. Yes, the, the free kick is probably technically there by the letter of the law, but the thing is, it didn't actually give Sydney any unfair advantage and didn't really influence the game. It's not like they missed a shocking holding the ball decision or they incorrectly did a score review, which actually influenced it. A guy climbed up on the goalpost and the umpire just said, hey, get down. Also, to be technical, the rule says you can't deliberately shake the goalpost post and does he actually shake the goalpost in the video? Probably not. Look, I won't labor on it too much, but I certainly don't think the Bombers were robbed. And I think with the magnitude of the situation and how it would have cost them the game, I think the umpire made the right decision. Anyway, this game's down at Hobart and North played really well down there. I think they're gonna beat City by at least 28 points this week. Next up, we have the Power hosting the Gold Coast Suns at Adelaide Oval. The Power's injury list is starting to take toll a little bit and we saw that with their loss to Adelaide last week in the showdown. I think subconsciously they're gonna breathe a bit of a sigh of relief they're playing the Suns this week. Rockliffe and Boak were still great last week, but without the firepower of Wines, they're still a little bit short on firepower. The Suns had their hearts broken last week and any small sniff of finals is probably gone now. Being six points up with less than a minute to go, they really should have done a better job of killing those contests, to be honest. They kind of let that game go begging. Despite the power missing a few key men, I can't really see the Suns putting on real pressure this weekend. I'm gonna tip the power to take a pressure relieving win by 39 points. Next up, we have Richmond hosting Hawthorne at the MCG. Now, Richmond will be stoked with their away win last week in Perth. It was a real tough, gritty performance, but, but the win will be soured, no doubt, by the loss of Toby Nankervis for an extended period. The Tigers have copped some real rough injury luck this year, but they've shown good resilience to get results regardless. As always, there's been a really good spread of contributors down there at Richmond, and that really speaks to how good the system is. They'll be stoked with Shy Bolton, who popped up as a youngster and bagged four goals last week. The Hawks, on the other hand, really bounced back after a bit of a form slump and pretty much schooled the Giants at the MCG. They made a big statement by dropping Ruffy last week, and that ruthlessness was brought into their field performance as well. Ricky Henderson continued his great season and Sicily, McAvoy and youngster James Cousins all performed really well as well. This is a really tough game to tip for me. I've got a weird feeling the Hawks are actually gonna get the result, but I'm also kind of a pussy. This one, I'm gonna have to tip conservatively and say Richmond win this by eight points. For the last game of the round, we've got the Giants hosting Carlton at Giant Stadium. Like I alluded to before, the Giants will be really disappointed with their loss last week and it was really way below their high standards. To be restricted to just five goals and 13 scoring shots is quite pitiful for them. And to me, it really speaks to the fact that they still haven't worked out how to play at the G. I mean, there's no real shame in not being able to play well at the G. For an interstate side, that's usually the last piece of the puzzle anyway. But regardless, it'll be a really bitter result for them and it's gotta be something they rectify soon. The Blues on the other hand are coming off probably their best honourable loss in some time. I think it's fair to say every neutral would have been going for Carlton to topple Collingwood last week. They're definitely building towards something good this season, but for me, I'm interested to see how the young guys respond mentally after losing such a close game against such a good team. Will they be able to bring the same intensity next week? I think if they do, they're probably gonna beat the Giants. I can see either the Giants winning comfortably or I can see the Blues winning. I do think Carlton are a serious chance, but Again, I'm gonna tip like a pussy and say GWS win by 31 points. Anyway guys, that's all the time we have this week and thank you for watching. I'm really hoping that weird fucking light isn't on my face throughout the whole video. Believe me, I have noticed it. I've been trying to move it, but yeah, see how we go. Look guys, if you're interested at all, I've actually started a personal YouTube channel to run alongside True Footy as well. If you're interested in subscribing to that, I will leave the link for you in the description of this video. True Footy is still gonna be my number one passion and I'm still gonna upload every week, but 
the personal one would just be a secondary one where people can maybe see a different side of me and, you know, more relaxed and talking about a few different topics other than just footy. Like, don't get me wrong, I am this nerdy about footy in person, but I thought it would be cool to start a personal one as well and I'm going to have a podcast on that one as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week for True Footy Reacts. See ya.